In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how the JavaScript this keyword works and how it changes its value depending on what type of context it's being called from. So that this keyword in JavaScript doesn't behave the same way as it does in other languages, so it can trip up new developers or existing developers coming from a different language. So let's have a look at the JavaScript this keyword and how its value changes depending on where you're using it. So as I mentioned, the value of this will depend on where you use it in your code, and that place where you use it is known as an execution context. So the first main execution context that you'll find in your code is the global context, which in the browser is the same as the window object. So if we actually log out this to the console in the global execution context, we'll just get the value of window. So you might be writing some functions in your code and they'll be in the global execution context too. And the value of the this keyword will be the same as the global execution context, which again will be the window object. And this goes as well for functions that are inside other functions too. You can see the value of this inside of any function will have the window object. There is a little caveat to that though if you're using strict mode. You can see that prevents the global execution context filtering down into the this keyword for functions. So it's unlikely you'd want to use the this keyword inside of functions or inside of the global execution context either, but where the this keyword becomes really important is when you're using it with objects. So here we have a simple object representing a user which has one function applied to the login property which takes one string parameter and compares it with the string that's stored in the password property. And notice in the login function that to refer to the password property of the user object I've used the this keyword. So if I was to call that function you can see that the equality check matches and I can also access the name property of the user object to print a message to the console. And that's because in this example, when we call the login function, the value of this gets set to the user object. So the simple way to remember this is when the function is called via an object. So the simple way to remember this is when you're calling a function from an object, inside the function, the value of this gets assigned to whatever is calling it from the left hand side, which in this case is the user object. So you might have noticed I've been using the function keyword, and the reason for this is if we were to actually use an arrow function here, we'd get a different result. And as you can see in the output in the console, the value of this inside of our login function is now actually referencing the global execution context or the window object, and therefore we can't access the password property or the name property of the user object. And that's because arrow functions have a different way of assigning a value to this, Instead of the function inheriting the this property of the calling object, they are actually bound to the outer execution context of where the function is defined. So that's just something to watch out for if you're using the this keyword with arrow functions. And we'll see in a second how this feature of arrow functions can be useful. So to give you one more example of how this gets its value from its execution context, let's create another property and assign it a function on our object. So with the list skills function, we're expecting to loop through all of the skills that are set up in the property on the user object and display the user object's name and their skill. But if we call that function now, you see we get an undefined or empty value for this.name. And that's because the value of this isn't what we expect it to be in this case. You can see in our example that the value of this is actually the global execution context yet again, and that's because we're calling a function that's not from an object. So we need a way to preserve the value of this inside of our for each function, and traditionally there are a couple of ways that we can do this. The first would be to assign the value of this to another variable as soon as our list skills function is called, and you might see this approach in a lot of older code bases. The other thing we can do is actually pass the value of this into the for each function to preserve that context. As you can see, we can pass the value of this from the list skills function into the for each function as an optional argument onto the end of the for each function call. Or the third way is to use an arrow function, which will bind the value of this from the list skills function to the value of this inside of the for each function. 
So there are several different ways that you can preserve this binding, but chances are if you're using arrow functions in other parts of your code, then this might be a good approach to keep some consistency. So one final example of an execution context is when you're creating new objects with a constructor function. So when you're creating a new person object, you will use the new keyword and pass in any parameters to the function as part of the constructor. And by using this approach, although we've got a function, we don't get the global execution context. The value of this is assigned to the person object that's created. So there's some example execution contexts and how you might get different values for the this keyword. And hopefully you can see depending on where you call the this keyword and how you use it, you will get different values. So that's it for this tutorial. I recommend going and having an experiment with the this keyword and trying to set up different objects and see if you can anticipate what the value will be when you try and use it within your code.